Hello and welcome to Furries of the North. I'm Game Popper and for a few years I've been looking into the history of the furry fandom in the UK because at the time it was a subject that wasn't really being talked about and this is even amongst the folks who did talk about furry history. Last year at Confuzzled I did a talk on the UK furry fandom as a whole, uh, but this one I'm focusing on the activities of furries from a very specific area, the North. As a disclaimer, uh, the north I'm talking about is the area marked on this map in red, uh, from Cheshire all the way up to Northumberland. So, sorry Scots, you're going to have to be the subject of a different talk. Uh, I'm aware that the definitions of what is considered north is disputed, uh, especially from my experiences with the Newcastle Furs, but this gives me a good deal of stuff to talk about. If you are from the north and you feel like your part of the country is being misrepresented, let me tell you that I'm from the Midlands. How do you think I feel? What we have here is a very simplified timeline of the history of the furry fandom from its very early beginnings all the way through to its introduction into the UK. So keep that in mind because there's a lot being missed out here. So in a bit more detail, uh, the 70s and the early 80s had a set of underground and independent art movements around the comics and cartoon industries that were essentially rebelling against the uh, major corporations that were driving cartoons towards being children's only medium. This was the time when you had the underground comics which heavily pushed towards adult themes using cartoon characters like with Robert Crumb's Fritz the Cat, Vooty, Omaha the Cat Dancer. The beginning of the anime fandom in the US was around this time as well as a uh, independent comics like Irma Thelma, Usagi Yojimbo, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that had cartoon animals with a very more mature theme and readership. By the mid-1980s, fans would start having parties in hotels at science fiction conventions, as well as talk to each other on BBSs about anthropomorphic art, and by 1986 we had the very first Furry Party at Wessacon 39 in Sacramento. It would have been around a year later that these furry fans would bring the Furry Party to the UK at the World Science Fiction Convention in Brighton, called Conspiracy 87. Then British furry fans would be active in certain fanzines like Rao Brazzle before starting to have their own gatherings in 1982 at Yately. Although up to this point, there wasn't really anything happening in the North. That's not to say that there were no furries in the north of England, because there definitely was. Uh, the very first Yately House Con had a furry fan from Manchester. Even Yately's founder, Ian Curtis, was originally from Hull himself. Uh, London Fur Meets had a few furries from the north who would be willing to travel all the way down to London. But by around this point, there were people talking to themselves and asking, like, you know, I really like to meet up with furries in my own area of the woods instead of having to travel all the way down here. So why can't we just have our own meets? <laughs> Although there were lifestyle fairies who held various one-off meetups in both the South and the Midlands, and fairies in Hampshire formed their own online group at the turn of the millennium, it was actually a small group of fairies in Chester that would get the ball rolling for regular meets outside of London. The Northwest Furs, as they called themselves, held their first fur meet in April 2000, making it the earliest fur meet on record. Nine furries, which included Baloo, Krill, Crimson, Spisto, and others not named, hung out at Pizza Hut, wandered through Toys R Us, played a game of Laser Quest, and bowling. Uh, the group would plan for future meets particularly in July, before going dormant, at least until a new group of a somewhat similar name and familiar faces emerged a few months later, Northern Furs. This group was set up by Anthony Evans, also known as Cabot, as a mailing list in August 2000, and held their first fur meet in Manchester later that month. Meets were held occasionally until December, when a plan was fully set up to meet both monthly and in a new city on each month, starting at the beginning of 2001 with Chester, Manchester and Liverpool. This started to go well, 
until the Liverpool meet fell through, and very few people were keen on the backup plan of doing another meet in Chester. A professional update on the Northern Firth website led to interest in having the meet in York, which would eventually be confirmed by a public vote as the meet location for March. This was followed by Leeds in April, Sheffield in May, and then back to Manchester in June. Uh, Liverpool wouldn't get their first Fermi until August. In July, there was a very heated debate about the uh, various different meet locations. There were people complaining about next meet location being either too far away, they wanted to get changed to somewhere closer because they didn't like the location in general. Eventually, the uh, management at the time, which was uh, Cabot, Avon, Furble Fox, Bailey and Bjornskrill decided to settle on a fixed meet schedule. So starting in January, the meet would be in Chester, and then it would rotate every month on the fixed schedule or that you can see in the uh, order below. So each city have a meet-up like twice a year. Because of a previously arranged Sheffield meet happening in November 2001, uh, the rotational meet format wouldn't actually go into full effect until the beginning of 2002, and this rotation would carry on for well over 10 years. So, searching for photos from really early Fermis is very difficult. Uh, I have managed to find a few good ones. Here's a group photo from a Liverpool Fermi from back in 2003. Thank you very much, Adcro, for that one. Uh, major thanks to Antira for uh, his... Uh, archive gallery of uh, photos from several very early fur meets, including all these northern fur ones. Not to mention a bunch of you people for uh, keeping your old YouTube videos. Very unsurprising that it's easier to find images and photos from after 2005 when diversity started to become a lot more commonplace in the very fandom.
Uh, Northern First would end up becoming the second largest regional group in the entire UK with 270 members on the mailing list. And their most popular fair meets were Manchester and Sheffield, both peaking at over 100 attendees, which for the mid 2000s was a very big number of furries at the time. Okay, fine. You want me to talk about some furries further up the north? Right, well, not a problem. So let's talk about knots. Wait a minute. I got, I oh, got that. Give me a moment, give me a moment. Right, fair. So, knots furs. Yes, that's Newcastle upon Tyne and Froze. Yes, that's the acronym, and yes, with the Z. And also, we know it should be upon, but apparently, nuts wasn't quite as catchy. <laughs> Back in 2001, a 17-year-old from Walls End by the name of Starlight joined the Northern person and managed to make a few long journeys to the meets. In the group, he managed to find a few more furries from around the Newcastle upon Tyne area, like Tyne, Durham, Middlesbrough, and Cleveland, and decided to set up his own mailing list for furries in the Northeast. Uh, starting off with mini meets for the first two or so years, Knotts would eventually hold monthly meets starting in 2003. These meets would take a unique approach of running on Sundays instead of Saturdays. According to Starlight, the idea was that these meets were less likely to interfere with or be interfered by the attendees' external lives and hopefully improve attendance. Uh, these meets were described as a uh, rather low-key, uh, even for Northern Furry standards, uh, there were around 12 attendees attending at any one time, uh, and they would wander from pub to pub with the occasional shopping centre. There would also be visits to the annual Green Festival, as well as trips to the bowling alley. Although there wasn't a rotational system, uh, there was a regular vote on where to hold the meet. So uh, you would also get meets in, at the Metro Centre or Middlesbrough, Durham, Hartlepool or South Shields. As we can see here, this is a map of all the different regional ferry meets that existed in the mid-2000s. This was taken directly from the Northern Furs website in 2007. So we have uh, blue being northern furs, and right just above it, an orange is knots furs. As for all the other areas, well, they were formed around the time between 2001-2003, when uh, furries decided had their own regional groups, had their own fur meets, uh, had their own way of uh, chatting to local furs. Usually from their own mailing lists, uh, and then almost all of them would transfer over to UK fur in some form. And as you can see, Knott's Fur is listed here, uh, which is uh, unusual for 2007 because by then they weren't running meets anymore. Uh, according to Starlight, there was some tension between members of the group around 2005, and he also wasn't in exactly a good state of mind whilst he was uh, working at university. He made a declaration that if the Knott's meets ever had ever made it to 20 members, he would set down. And sure enough, the Knott's Fair meets were surpassed 20 attendees. I can't find any record of who took over the fair meets, but apparently the new organiser fell up with a number of people and just stopped running the fair meets just after a few months. That's where one fairy from Middlesbrough came in, Packwolf Loopstrike. He joined the fandom in the latter half of 2006 and seemed pretty heavily involved by 2007 as he may have seen in the videos from the Northern Furs, 
The six months rotation that required him to wait for months to attend and meet within reaching distance, and the disintegration of the Knots group compelled him to resurrect Thermites in the Newcastle region. The name he chose was Tyne Furs, which would make sense at around the same time other northern furries would start organising monthly mini-meets that were smaller and more frequent, like Mank Furs, Leeds Furs, Sheffield Furs, Scout Furs, so Tyne Furs would fit quite nicely. Uh, the mini meets kept the tradition of running on Sundays, but according to Loopstripe, this is actually because his work as a sports journalist required him to work on Saturdays. They were still rather small for the time, starting off with only six and growing to 25 by the end of the decade. As you can see in these photos, they mostly made up of pub meets in the Newcastle city around the Gay Triangle with a few fursuits. Uh, one other tradition that ended up catching on was that there would be a group picture of the furries. First one was done in 2008 by Ruadri, a name I probably butchered to death, and continued each year by either Ziva or Ganetta. Luke Stripe moved to Leeds and, because of travel cars, decided to hand the reins over to Draken, who would continue running them 
before passing over once again to someone else. Uh, by this point, there were actually cracks in the typers, apparently with like three different firm meets running simultaneously at one point. Uh, this was coincidentally around the time that Northern Firms would start to break apart themselves. Uh, the Chesterfair meets would be cancelled in 2011 due to the lack of attendance, with the very last one in January that year only having three people turn up. And mini meets branched off into their own groups. This is why we now have uh, fair meets run by different groups in each major city, including Newcastle Furs, where one of the organisers is our very own Kivuli. The original oh, Norman first bit is <laughs> kept trouble. alive thanks to Mankfurs <laughs> and Yorkfurs, both <laughs> having main meets that <laughs> run so twice a year in the actual same yeah. month bracket the that they originally <laughs> had in their meet rotation schedule. So we've looked at fur meets, but how about conventions? Well, uh, UK furries have been talking about wanting their own furry convention as early as 2001 back when the number of furries in the country was somewhere between 150 to 250 people. The first attempt began in the summer of 2002, when a bunch of London furs discussed running a furry convention at Peckfitton Castle, just outside of Chester. The name they chose for this upcoming convention was one that would unfortunately carry over for a number of failed attempts. Brit Fur there have been at least four different groups in total that have tried to organise a convention, all of them at least initially using the name Brit Fur. The first one, the uh, London Fur one, would end up falling through after Peckford and Castle raised their prices, and the furries who ran the website basically disappeared, leaving the convention on hold and petering out by April 2004. It also didn't help that the legal organiser uh, had a had been under some controversy with how he was uh, gathering funds. Uh, there were two more failed attempts that largely failed due to personal issues amongst the organisers, but there was one more attempt that's worth talking about because it takes place back up north. Meet Tippus Taylor's a fellow from Essex who was known for making his own fursuits and comprehensive websites either around his interest in the fandom, engineering, or mascots. He has been described by a few people I've spoken to or read about as someone who's held a long reputation for being rather full of himself, with a lot of ambitions that he doesn't follow through on. Sounds like the ideal person to try and run a convention, right? Well, in the summer of 2004, he made a group known as the UK Furcon Parody Committee to poke fun at the other furry convention attempts. But according to Taylor's, people started taking it seriously enough for him to run a convention seriously himself and try and run a furry convention proper. So, in January 2005, he wrote extensively on a newly established website for Brit Fur 2005, we have a plan to host a convention during the May Bank holiday weekend at the Jury's Door Hotel in Manchester. Then, for whatever reason, he went on to the Northern Furs mailing list and pitched the convention to them in the hopes that the group would change their meet schedule so that a Manchester meet would happen in April as opposed to May, when his planned convention would be. Why he decided to do this for a month before the planned convention and a few days before registration even opened is, is anyone's guess. To say that some of the Northern Fur members seeing a London Fur wandering and demand such a change for their benefit as a joke would have been an understatement, with plenty of criticism being sent to Tippus, who disregarded them and remained insistent that his plan should go ahead because he apparently made a deal with the hotel for convention space and only had a few days left to put down the deposit for it. Needless to say, the Northern Furs did set up a poll for members to decide whether to go ahead with Tips's proposal or not, and a majority voted no. The Manchester meet will run in May as scheduled. Tippus didn't take this well, publicly blaming the Northern Furs for ruining a good opportunity. He would persevere, although not in the way that improved either his or his convention's reputation. He delayed the convention to November and then to April the following year, 
by which time people's expectation can be summed up into a single comment found on the news group Alt Fan Theory. That one is dead and will never be. There was a debate around the time over whether the convention was real or an elaborate prank, especially given how rushed it appeared to be towards the Northern Furs. I'm personally of the mindset that it was real, but handled by someone who was very inexperienced. To give Taylor some credit, he did have enough organizational skills to set up a company under the name Britfur Limited, something that none of the other Britfurs ever did, as far as my research goes. I mean, the activity of the company isn't much, but it is there. <laughs> The results of Britford ended up souring any prospects of someone running a furry convention to the point where the term British Furry Convention was a joke in of, in of itself. Although there were a few ambitious folk there who would continue to make a UK furry con a reality. This is where Furble Fox comes in. If you may recall, he was one of the members of the Northern Furs Management specifically for running the website and later the Manchester Meets. He did participate in the first Britfur very early on and had been talking about running a Northern Furry Convention as early as 2003. He apparently shelved the idea until Eurofurance 11 at the Nuremberg Castle, where he talked about it with his friends at Northern Furs, with the idea that their collective experience with running fur meets would help them with running a convention. The idea was sat on for a few months until Ferbal Fox paid a holding deposit at the YHA International Manchester for of £144. The convention's webpage went live in June 2006 and initially there were skeptics. The earliest comment I could find was from a mid first mailing list on October 2006 that literally said, no one believes it's really going to happen. But, the team were able to open for registration in April, and by January 2006, it had officially sold out of all rooms. The convention would be called Confuzzled, and it would be UK's first fully residential, nobody doubts it, convention. So, the very first Confuzzled would host 136 people, according to its official numbers. The attendance list at the time actually shows 179 paid registrations. Cameraman Big Blue Fox was the guest of honour, and there were a lot of events to enjoy like the pub quiz, karaoke, frankincense, and the motor purse. The convention would be described by some as a fursuit convention because of the large number of fursuiters. To put it into perspective, before 2005, fursuits were uncommon in the United States and rare in the UK. Even after 2005, even after 2005, most conventions that had a separate count for fursuiters would estimate around 10% of the attendees owning a fursuit. At Confuzzle, that percentage was somewhere between 45-50%. to 50%. The highest count I could find was 67 fursuiters. Confuzzle would run again at the YHA in 2009, this time with non-residential tickets for the first time, meaning more attendees. This also was the first Confuzzle to present the Paw Pest Show, directed by Utla, with help from Fairlight, who originally created the Eurofront Paw Pest Show, as well as Fat Kraken producing Paw Pest themselves, and other members of the Confuzzle staff with their production. Uh, the, the Paw Pest Show was titled The Great James Mountbatten Windsor's Magnificent Zoological Extravaganza, or the Manchurian Play. With 182 furries in attendance, it was evident that the convention needed to move in order to grow. So, in the closing ceremony, it was revealed that the next confuzzle would take place in a hotel, the Britannia Country Hotel. This convention would also be the first year that Matt Lyon would be chairman, as Serbal Fox stood down for personal reasons. This was also arguably the first confuzzle to go out with its theming, with plenty of science-based events like talks from an actual physicist, and demonstrations of Van de Graaff's and heat pad wheels. However, the most noteworthy event was the charity auction where a bidding war ensued for a tablecloth with a drawing done by Tani Darayal, 
going for £2,000, which would remain the UK record for the charity auction until 2013. Attendance almost doubled to 346 attendees, making it the largest growing convention at the time. Confossil would return to the Britannia once more with a Roaring Twenties theme. It would introduce the first two dance competition to the UK, having first made their presence at Fairy Week in Atlanta in 2008, with its first winners being Keo and Sakari. Uh, it also successfully took over the hotel with 499 attendees. However, it would also be the last confuzzle in Manchester, as the convention would move to Hinckley in 2012 and then later Birmingham in 2014. For the UK furry fandom, 2011 saw Confuzzle become one of the largest furry events outside of America, second to Eurofurns, as well as the end of RBW, London's furry convention, and the beginning of Scotiacom, Scotland's furry convention. For the next few years, there was a growing interest for more furry, fur furry conventions in the country, particularly smaller and relaxed conventions. This led to a number of proposed conventions, some of which would fail to get anywhere, like Fur Isle and Bavaria, but some would eventually succeed, like Just for the Weekend and Vacation. Meanwhile, up north, there may have been a few who felt like they would like to have a fur convention where they are, particularly after Confessor's move towards the Midlands. This is where the Scouts first come in. Starting in 2013, Organisers and long-standing members of the fur meet, such as Fang, Pet, and Matt, plan to have a furry convention in their home city of Liverpool, Prevention. As you can see from the banner and special members of badge, there was a heavy technology theme going. To its credit, it ran in 2015 with 64 attendees, making it just larger than ScotiaCon in its first year. It was also the first fairy convention to have a guest of honour from outside of the fairy fandom, with video game composer Tim Wright, best known under his pseudonym Cold Storage. It's impressive that it was able to run at all, since three weeks before the convention opened, it was revealed that their initial hotel had sudden renovation plans, so all their bookings had to be transferred over to the Aloth Hotel. Sadly, as of speaking, this would be the only year it would run. Registration did open for Prevention 2016, with the theme being Wastelanders, but a month later the convention was put on indefinite hiatus citing technical issues. They did tease the possibility of returning in 2018 with events sometime in 2020, but... Which brings us to the convention you're enjoying right now, Wild North. Organised by Kavuli, Ziegenbach and Ty from the Newcastle Perth. Safe to say it's had a humble beginning of a bunch of friends spending the weekend at the Drone Shop Bunkhouse where we enjoy playing games of werewolf, messing around with lightsabers and checking out the Bow of Chahill, the Town of Anik and the Beamish Home of Navy Museum. This was followed the year after with a small upgrade to a castle. Did I say small upgrade? I meant big upgrade. Heart Whistle Castle in Featherstone to be specific, with double the furries and vast open areas to explore. As you can see, furries in the north of England have made a pretty strong impact on the British furry fandom. They help spread the interest of setting up regular fur meets in your own regions and cities, as well as brought fully residential furry conventions to the country. While we do live in such stressful times right now, it is important to learn how far we come and know that we can get through this. And we will. Thanks for listening.